Kirby Allison, founder of The Hanger Project. In today's video, I'm gonna show you how to match the perfect Saphir Medal d'Or shoe polish color to your pair of Allen Edmonds dress shoes. One of the most frequent questions we receive here at The Hanger Project is what color shoe polish should I use for my Allen Edmonds? Now we receive that specifically for Allen Edmonds because it's one of the most popular uh, and certainly most important uh, shoe companies here in the United States, still manufacturing high quality, fully welted dress shoes in America. For the money, about $395 for these dress shoes we have here, you really can't beat it. And one of the things that I always say is that if you're looking to really invest in a proper dress shoe that's gonna last years, if not decades, you really need to be at the Allen Edmonds quality level or better. The full 360 degree Goodyear welting means that you can resole your shoes as often as you need to. And Allen Edmonds uses a really high quality upper leather that is only gonna look better with time and only going to look better with proper polish. If you have any questions or comments during this video, please ask them in the comments section below. Let us know what you think. Do you wear Allen Edmonds? What type of uh, Allen Edmonds shoes do you have? And then if you had any challenges choosing the proper color shoe polish for your pair of AEs. When selecting your shoe polish color, it's important to understand that there's never gonna be a perfect match. I mean, with the exception of black, it doesn't matter how many different shoe polish colors you have, you're not gonna be able to find the perfect pigmented cream polish that is uh, made for the pair of shoes that you have. The reason is, is that there's so many different shoe manufacturers out there that a medium brown or a light brown from one company to another is never gonna be the same. And even with the same shoe, it's never gonna be the same. Allen Edmonds, for instance, hand applies all of their finishes. So if you pull out five different pairs of walnut uh, Allen Edmonds shoes, uh, most likely each of those shoes is gonna have a slightly different finish. And it's one of the things that I really love about a high quality pair of shoes. Part of the magic of polishing your own shoes is to see how that finish, the patina, evolves over the lifetime of the shoe as you put more polish into the leather. In choosing your shoe polish color, you really have an opportunity to make a decision as to what direction you're gonna take that finish so that those shoes are really personalized to you. I have a pair of Allen Edmonds dress shoes in each of the five most popular finishes uh, that I think that anyone should consider. Now these are the most kind of traditional, conservative finishes that you're gonna find on all of Allen Edmonds most popular models. Of course we have black, uh, then we have uh, oxblood, brown, walnut, and dark chili. Five beautiful finishes and really you couldn't go wrong with a pair of Allen Edmonds shoes in any of these colors. The first pair of dress shoes I bought in college was a black pair of Allen Edmonds Park Avenues. This cap to Oxford is certainly one of the most traditional, formal dress shoes that you can buy. And in the color black, you can wear it for anything. You can wear it during the day, you can wear it at night, you can wear it to a wedding, a funeral, or to your first interview. So if you're only gonna buy one shoe, this is the shoe to invest in. Now black is easy. Of course, you're gonna use a black shoe polish. Now what's great about the Saphir Medal d'Or black polish, and as you can see here, is that, again, it has such a high concentration of pigment in it that you really get great saturation of the finish itself. Even though if you're buying a pair new from the factory, I absolutely recommend polishing them first, and we have a video on how to shine a new pair of shoes. There's no polish or actual finishing on a pair of shoes straight from the factory. So if we were to polish these with a little bit of cream polish and then buff it off, you would actually see a real nice shine begin to develop. Also, the waxes and both the cream and the wax polish are gonna help protect the leather and just give it that, that finished look of a well-cared pair of shoes. With black, of course, I'd recommend a black polish. Next, I have a pair of Park Avenues in Oxblood. Now, Oxblood is a beautiful finish that combines red with a little bit of black to create a deep kind of burgundy that has visual interest, right? It's got color, uh, but it still means business. It's still formal. So there's several different color polishes that you could use here. And once we get away from black into some of the other finishes, we're really gonna see how different polishes can take this shoe in a different direction. First is Hermes Red. Uh, the second color is mahogany. And then the third possible color you could use is burgundy, right? Now each of these three polishes are gonna take this shoe in a little bit different direction. So let's take a look uh, at 
how that would work by smearing uh, the polish on a little bit of white paper. Now I like to take a pigmented polish and, uh, and smear it on paper because it allows you to really better see the pigment in the polish and where that would take. Hermes Red uh, has more red in it. Mahogany is more of the brown family. It still has some red, a little bit lighter of a red than the Hermes Red, and is probably a little bit closer to brown. And then last is uh, Burgundy. Burgundy absolutely has very strong hints of purple. So first I'm starting with the Burgundy. And the Burgundy really blends into the oxblood quite nicely. But again, those purple pigments are going to darken the leather slightly. So with the burgundy polish, again, we're bringing out some of those purple undertones that you get whenever you mix black and red. Now next, I'm gonna show you what the Hermes Red looks like. It sounds like a strong pigment color, but as I apply it here, it too blends in quite nicely. So if you were to use Hermes Red on these oxbloods, again, you would be pulling out that red finish. It's still quite subtle. But nevertheless looks great. Now last is the mahogany. The mahogany, again, as I said, has a little bit less red in it than the Hermes Red and more brown. And so of the three polishes, this one is the one that I would say probably least matches this oxblood finish. So if you were looking to mute the finish, maybe you would use a mahogany. But of the three different pigment colors that we have here, I would say that mahogany actually matches this oxblood the least. My two recommendations for the Allen Edmonds oxblood is either the number 12 Hermes Red, if you wanna accentuate some of the red in this finish, or the number eight Burgundy, if you wanna bring out the purple. Next, we have the Allen Edmonds Brown Finish. This is the Fifth Avenue in brown. Now, the Fifth Avenue is a slightly less formal dress shoe than the Park Avenue because of the broguing across the cap, uh, but still very uh, much a formal dress shoe. Now to call this brown is really uh, honestly a little misleading because this is a dark brown. And so for this shoe, the only polish that I would recommend is going to be the Saphir dark brown. The number five dark brown is almost a black. And as you can see from this shoe, it is such a dark finish that in low light, it would be mistaken for a black. So if I smear this onto, again, my swatch card, you can see that it is almost as dark as that black. I mean, it is a proper dark brown. And I've got a little bit of scuffing right here. I'm gonna put this polish over that scuff mark. And you can see that the dark brown really perfectly matches the Allen Edmonds brown color. Let's buff that off and see how that works. So that scuff mark all but completely removed with a little bit of additional polish. The waxes would really help completely conceal that. But from a pigment perspective, any discoloration from scuffing is gonna be fixed very easily with a good cream polish. So here I have the Allen Edmonds Strand in their walnut color. Now walnut is a beautiful medium brown. This is probably the second dress shoe anyone should buy next to the black. Everyone needs a good brown that's not too light, not too dark. This to me is the quintessential brown dress shoe. Now what's nice about the strand is that as you can see, there's a little bit more broguing across this. So again, it's a less formal shoe than say this, uh, the, uh, the Fifth Avenue or the Park Avenue, which is perfect for brown. So for this shoe, there's two polish colors that I think you could use. One is the light brown. Now the light brown, again, is slightly lighter than the finish of this shoe. And so you're not gonna have to worry about it excessively darkening the leather. But it still has enough pigment in it that if you have any type of scratching, it's gonna fill that in. And depending on what area of the shoe, you know, the, uh, the light brown is either a perfect match where the polish saturation is not that great, uh, or it's a little bit dark where you see some more burnishing. So you could also use the medium brown. Now the medium brown would definitely darken this a little bit. And 
if I put this on a swatch card, you're gonna be able to see the difference in these two. So definitely darker. If I put it on the lighter area of the shoe, you can really see how it makes a difference. It's gonna darken that a little bit. But here, say on the toe cap, it's slightly less dark. Now, let's see. Here is the cognac. You might also be able to use the cognac on here. Let's see. Well, the cognac again has maybe a little bit too much red in it. Now, it's not to say that you couldn't use it, you just have to understand how that red is gonna bring the finish of the shoe. You know, as I said earlier, uh, you know, choosing the correct polish color is more of an art than it is a science and is a complete function of personal preference. You absolutely cannot ruin a pair of dress shoes by using the wrong polish color as long as you're not trying to use a black on a light brown pair of shoes. For the Allen Edmonds Walnut Finish, if you're looking to really maintain that original finish, I'm gonna recommend the number three light brown. If you're okay with the slight darkening or if you wanna uh, introduce a little bit of a burnishing or antiquing effect to these walnuts, then I would recommend the number 37 medium brown. And if you really wanna play around with the finish of your shoes, you could absolutely use the number 10 cognac. Here is the Allen Edmonds Dark Chili. Now the Dark Chili is really a medium brown to a medium to dark brown with a little bit of red introduced into the finish. It's a beautiful shoe. It's shown here in the McAllister wingtip, which is uh, your classic wingtip dress shoe. Formal, uh, but still uh, certainly more visually interesting than your plain uh, cap toe Park Avenue. So for these shoes, I would recommend either the tobacco brown, which would darken the finish slightly, or the medium brown. Now the medium brown is probably the safest polish to use if you're looking to really just maintain the finish of these shoes. It blends in nicely, it'll fix any type of scuffing you have without unnecessarily darkening the finish. So let's see how that buffs off. Now the Havana brown is gonna be slightly darker than the medium brown. It's not going to <clears throat> dramatically change the finish, but is perfect for uh, the areas of the shoe where there's a little bit of burnishing. And once you massage this and smooth it out across the leather, again, it's gonna darken it slightly in the light areas, match perfectly in those dark areas but absolutely works with this dark chili. The McAllister wingtip and the dark chili is a beautiful classic shoe that certainly is not out of place in any classic wardrobe. If you're really looking to darken this and kind of further the antiquing, I recommend the number 34 Tobacco Brown. And if you just want to maintain that finish without any risk of darkening, then I would recommend the number 37 Medium Brown. Here at The Hanger Project, I really recommend the primary use of a cream polish in polishing your shoes. Now, most people only think of a wax polish whenever it comes to shining their shoes, but a wax polish doesn't have the same concentration of pigment that's going to renew and refinish the patina of the shoe. And second, a wax polish isn't going to do as good of a job as a cream polish to nourish and condition and to feed that leather to keep it looking soft and supple and to prevent any type of drying that may result in cracking. The Saphir Medal Dior Pomodier Cream Polish is widely considered by shoe aficionados to be the highest quality cream shoe polish out there in the world. The reason is it uses an all natural pine based turpentine and a high concentration of shea butter, waxes, and other nutrients that are going to feed the leather to keep it soft, supple, and to prevent cracking. Since the Allen Edmonds Shoes uses such a high quality leather, an open grain leather that hasn't been unnaturally treated or closed, it's even more important to use a high quality luxury shoe polish like the Saphir Medal Dior. Spending a little bit of extra money on your polish will really make a difference in how these shoes look and last for the long term.
One of the frequently asked questions that we receive here at The Hangar Project is what to do with the new pair of dress shoes. So let's just say you just went out and bought your first pair of beautiful Allen Edmonds dress shoe. Can you just put them on and start wearing them? Spending a little bit of time right when you receive a pair of dress shoes to polish them is absolutely something we recommend. The reason is because no factory that's making ready-to-wear shoes has the time to actually hand polish a pair of shoes. So although it's finished, the leather is dyed, it looks great, they haven't actually been polished with a proper shoe polish. And then certainly any new pair of shoes needs their own shoe trees. The reason is, is that as you wear a pair of shoes, the shoe leather is going to absorb moisture. As you're flexing the shoe, uh, it's gonna naturally bend. So whenever you take your shoes off at the end of the night, you're gonna find that they naturally kind of flex upward. Now the purpose of a shoe tree is it stretches that shoe flat so that as the moisture begins to evaporate, the shoe dries flat and not bent. Second, of course, is lacing the shoes. Some shoes come laced, sometimes the uh, uh, salesperson at the shoe store will lace them for you. Uh, but we have a video specifically showing you how to lace your shoes using uh, the straight across or barbell method, which I think looks the cleanest on a formal pair of dress shoes. Another question that we receive often here at The Hanger Project is what happens if I use the wrong shoe polish on a pair of shoes? Well, it's not the end of the world. Any polish that you put on top of a pair of leather dress shoes can easily be removed using the Saphir Reno Mat, which basically pulls off anything placed on top of the original finish, but is still safe to use without affecting the original dye. Second, I always recommend first testing the polish on a small kind of hidden or discrete area of the shoe just to see how the leather is gonna interact or play with the polish that you're using because it's always going to change just a little bit and you can never be quite certain of what it's gonna look like. And then of course, here at The Hanger Project, we sell samples of all of our polishes. So if you wanna try a few different polishes off before you commit to purchasing an entire jar, take a look at our shoe polish section and we offer small, tiny samples that you can use to verify finish. Now, Allen Edmonds has way more than just five finishes. They've really done a fantastic job at adding new and interesting finishes across their entire range. Now, these uh, four models that we show here are just available in the finishes that I've shown, but a lot of their more seasonal collections come in colors like blue, green, you know, beautiful different patinas. And so my suggestion would be to take a look at our polishing notes, uh, to order samples if you'd like to, uh, and just go with what you think is gonna be the closest match. Lastly, if you have any questions about what type of uh, shoe polish you should select uh, for a, a color that we didn't cover here, or maybe from a pair of shoes uh, from a completely different brand, don't hesitate to email customer service with a link to a photograph of the shoe or an actual photograph of the shoe. And of course, we'd be more than happy to help coach you in selecting the right polish. If you have any questions about anything we discussed in this video, don't hesitate to ask them in the comments section below. I get back to all those questions myself personally. Also, let us know, what's your favorite Allen Edmonds finish? How do you shine your shoes? Do you have any tips for us on things that you've learned? And then any stories you have just about Allen Edmonds. Uh, it's a great all-American shoe brand. It's certainly one of the top shoes that you can get for the under $400 price point. And we always love to hear about what our viewers think. If you like this video, give us the thumbs up and subscribe to our YouTube channel so that you can receive notifications whenever we release our next video. I'm Kirby Allison. Thanks for joining us.